my name is Jane Pierce. My business is Tara Jane, and I'm here to talk to you about astrology. Specifically, I'm here to talk to you about the Great American Eclipse. The Great American Eclipse happens on April 8th here across most of America, and it will affect us more because we can see it. And the more you're visible in eclipses, the more it impacts you, although every eclipse does affect everybody on the globe. What else is special about this eclipse? Well, it's a little bit hotter than usual. This eclipse happens in Aries, and we've been having a series of eclipses happen either in Aries or Libra. The North Node is right now in Aries, the South Node's in Libra. So we're having a new moon eclipse, which means the moon will block the light of the sun, and both of those will be in Aries with the North Node. Two weeks before the Great American Eclipse, we're going to have a Libra lunar eclipse in which the Earth will block the light of the sun from reaching the moon in Libra for a short period of time. Libra is in the south node eclipse. The south node is what we need to let go. It's often called the tail of the dragon. The north node is the fire-breathing, hot beginning of the dragon, the mouth of it, what's going to be consumed. And I like to think of the North Node as that thing that we're reaching for in the future, but it is not an easy thing. Like that fire-breathing dragon, what we have to reach for with the North Node can be something that is, we're scared of what it will turn out like, we're intimidated by it. It is a place where our hopes and our fears mix together. However, it is a place of the future. So this April eclipse, this new moon solar eclipse in Aries, will be a time of looking to the future. We'll have already done our looking to the past for that lunar eclipse that happens with the South Node in March. But there's some things that happen between them that make the solar eclipse a lot more intense. Specifically, Mercury is going to go retrograde in Aries where the sun and moon will be in on April 1st. What an April Fool's Day, Mercury retrograde. It's unfortunately not a joke, but it may make a fool of a lot of us. And so the Mercury retrograde is not only close to the sun and moon during this eclipse, it is also very close to Chiron. Chiron or Chiron, people pronounce it differently, is the wounded healer. It has a tremendous amount to teach us. It is a wonderful thing for leading to our future. But just like the North Node, it is not a comfortable or easy lesson. This is the lesson about where our greatest wounds give us the power to make a difference in the world. This is for example, Chiron is where somebody who has been bullied makes a difference in stopping bullying, or somebody with an addiction is the only person who can help other people heal that addiction. So we are, have these uncomfortable, intense places where the lessons we're learning are going to be amazingly hot. Why hot? Hot because Mercury, with its words, is going to be in the hot side of Aries. Aries is fast, it's hot, it's cardinal fire. And those words will come fast and furious, but with the retrograde, they may not come clear and they're likely to change. So you'll get hurry up and wait, fast and furious, but not necessarily clear. Chiron will have that same thing. Don't talk to me. Wait a minute. I spoke too fast. I do need to talk about this. The North Node will do some of that same thing. It makes everything louder. It makes everything faster. It makes everything more intense. That is four different things adding their intensity. So let me say them real quick again. The North Node at 15 degrees Aries, the Sun, Moon, and Chiron at 19 degrees Aries, and then Mercury retrograde just a little bit past in the 20s of Aries. So you got some hot and frustrating energy. Making all of this a little bit more messy is that Aries is ruled by Mars. And Mars is a planet of fire and combat and hustle and initiative. Mars loves to be in Aries, and it's not right now. Instead, Mars is in Pisces, where the watery, flowy, sometimes hard to decide and dreamy energy of Pisces is making Mars' fight come out passive-aggressive. So we're looking at a passive-aggressive Mars ruling the energies of this eclipse and of the Mercury retrograde and of Chiron and of the North Node. Not a pretty picture. Mars, luckily, is only the lesser malefic or the second worst planet in the solar system. However, the first worst, or 
as it's called more appropriately, the greater malefic is Saturn. Saturn is a planet that takes things away slow, final. It is timely and patient and enduring and wears away what it takes away. It freezes what it takes away. It slowly erodes with time and persistence. And so Saturn takes away and slowly Mars takes away fast. And Mars, the ruling planet of Aries, is right next to Saturn. As a matter of fact, they'll have an exact conjunction just the two days after the eclipse. But before that eclipse, you still have Mars and Saturn so close to each other that in addition to Mercury retrogrades, confusing communication, we get Mars going, cut it off, and, and Saturn saying, tie it off and prune it. Mars saying hot and fast, and Saturn saying slow and cold. So this hurry up and wait, this uncertainty if we move fast or slow, whether we want immediate results or we want long-term results, that energy that is such in conflict when the two, the greater malefic and the lesser malefic come together is what's ruling this eclipse. And that is going to be confusing. It is asking us to really dig in and figure out what we want and what we need. Because we don't only have to figure out what do we want right now, which is usually what Aries wants to answer. But we have to figure out what we want for the next six months because the eclipse is setting us up for a six-month schedule that says, what do you need to do, not just now, but between now and the fall? And what have you tried to accomplish that is no longer worth pushing on between now and last fall? Last fall, we had a Libra solar eclipse, and last spring we had an Aries solar eclipse. So we've been in this cycle now for about a year, and having that hit come with resetting our thinking with Aries about how do we start, what do we think initiative is, what, how do we push our agenda, how do we hustle. Another way to say that is how do we make haste more slowly? How do we move forward when we actually can move forward instead of this energy that we've been trapped in of one step forward and two steps back? So this conflict and how to move forward, how to start things, is asking us to reassess what do we mean by beginnings, initiative, aggressive? How do we start wars? Because that's not what we really want. The fight is not about starting. The fight is about winning or accomplishing or completing. And Aries isn't good at that. It can start much more than it can ever finish. So let yourself, with this eclipse, reset your thinking about impatience and getting going. Let the emotional reset that happens in the lunar eclipse on March 25th guide you so that your impatience or frustration doesn't make decisions that you're not ready to commit to. You will be tempted to say, if we're not doing it now, I quit. Now, you know, take me home or lose me forever. That's not a successful energy that we're going to be in. So consider instead. If I can't get started on this, at least I can get started on that. I can get ready this way even if I can't prepare to go live. That's the way you win this energy. You find before the eclipse the emotional reserves of determination so that the frustration and impatience don't push you to a place that you don't mean to go. And Mercury retrograde is going to be trying to do that. Let me be clear. Mercury retrograde, when it meets up with the Chiron of our wounded healer in the north node of intensity, is going to have already sensitized all of these hot spots before we get to the eclipse. And in the midst of the retrograde of April, it will be hitting those things for a second time. Luckily, it's much, much better in May. So the mantra I'm using is self care and then. For March and enjoyment, calm in the face of unreasonable demands in April. And then we get to late April and May, celebrate the survival, celebrate the maturity, celebrate what you have been able to make, what you were able to stick to 
because long term matters more than right now. And this Aries energy is setting so many fires that lead to pirate victories. Do not win a battle that makes you lose the war. Instead, resist these fights. Keep it calm. Don't accept the passive aggressive battle and wait until you get to make a resounding response that says, now I can move forward and get what I really want, not what I want right now. If you would like to know how this is going to affect you personally, what you'll need to do is find your rising sign and count around the circle till you find what house is Aries. Because the Aries house, where all of this stuff is happening, and to some degree the Pisces house, where Mars and Saturn are at and Mars ruling Aries, those two houses are going to be the most affected. So if they're about your finances in the second house, then you'll feel this in money. If they're in the seventh house, you'll feel it with partners. If it's in the 10th house, you'll feel it at work. So where Aries falls in your chart is very important. You can look that up on your chart or you can give me a call and get a reading and find out how you can best thrive through eclipse season. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I look forward to talking to you soon.